Right, good evening. Good evening, good evening, good evening, and hello. <laughs> Carrying on again with the Rat Rig V Minion today. Um, got quite a lot still to do, but it's already looking kind of like a printer, so progress is reasonably good. Do have to let you know, this stream is sponsored by Rat Rig. They obviously provided the printer too, and it's also kind of, sort of, kind of sponsored by my V Minion PCB design called the the Divider PCB mod, which unfortunately at the moment has all sold out, but <laughs> uh, more will be coming. Hopefully, probably. But yes, welcome everyone. I think it's going to be a little bit of a quieter one today, Sunday Sunday evening. Um, and of course Mother's Day here in the UK. I don't know if that's a Europe-wide thing as well, but definitely in the UK people may be doing their Mother's Day things. So. Where is everyone indeed? There's lots of people not here, isn't there? I'm not quite sure what's going on. It might be a time zone thing. Maybe people got confused. Uh, I mean, you never know. I don't think there's anyone else live streaming. Just one of those things. Hopefully people will uh, turn up as they realize that it's happening and they can join in when they join in. And of course the, like the after, like just because this live bit now, we have quite a few people normally joining us for this. There's lots of people that just like to watch it, enjoy it afterwards. And of course they take some guidance on the kind of assembly process as well. So, you know, different people enjoy different bits of it. Yes, we do. We all just shifted time today. It's been super confusing. It feels like three o'clock in the afternoon and it's actually half past seven in the evening, even though it only changed one hour. <laughs> You'd think it'd be easy, but it's still about as difficult as it gets for some reason. Hey, Squirrel Brain. Good to see ya. Yeah, I guess we'll just get on with it, eh? Let's just start the buildy things because I want to get on and build it. Oh. So, of course, we'll have the instructions so you can see what I'm getting on to. Like the first episode, we did like the unboxing and preparations and stuff. And then we did last episode, the frame assembly and X-axis motor assembly. So that's kind of all the stuff that's on here now. The aim today, priority is to do Y-axis motor and idler and then the X, the, the Y-axis carriage and bed. Hopefully we'll get onto the x-axis assembly as well, but not promising that one. Mainly focusing on these two, and we'll see how long it takes, because I'm not sure how long this will take at all. Hello Joshua on Twitter. A uh, Twitter. Twitch! Not good at the old words today, apparently. More people showing up. It's just people confused on timings, probably. I certainly was. <laughs> so, starting with this, I suppose. Now, I'm using my slightly modified parts. They're linked below in the GitHub link. Uh, so my parts do look a little bit different, but generally, the whole assembly process is basically the same. So, it should still be pretty easy to follow along with. For example, my Y-axis part looks like this. Whereas the stock one looks like a something different. I should be comparing them as we go, really, shouldn't I? That'd be a good idea. And that piece is quite different. Uh, we did cover quite a few of these changes actually in the like the pre-episode, the preparations episode. Yeah, this is the original one here. So you can see like fundamentally it's the same, but it's also kind of different. My one prints this way around, 
and that helps not only the strength in the in most important direction uh, but also a bit with overhangs and that kind of stuff so unfortunately the logo hasn't printed on mine i did it as like a two-part thing but i didn't do the filament change needed so unfortunately we've lost the logo but it's still pretty neat and tidy i think generally it's pretty obvious what's going on so yes this part and we also need a motor some pulleys i swear i just saw them here here we go so we'll get that lot out I have decided as well, I'm going to use some Gates belts. I do have them by chance in stock at the sizes I need. But in stock, I'm literally mean on the shelf. I'm not selling them out of a shop. Uh, so yeah, I just so happen to have the right sizes. Well, a size that I can cut down to length. So I'm going to use Gates belts instead. Uh, some nuts, M4 base. Uh, four and six by 12 screws. That's these ones, isn't it? Hello there, into sight. Uh, six by 12, one, two, three, four of those. Which of these do we need? Nine mil belt, please, that one. Uh, M3 by 8 cap head screw, M3 by 12, uh, M3 by 6, 3 by 10. The bag numbering is kind of weird, but I sort of understand it. We are very quiet today. 20 people. It's probably, I'm going to get messages afterwards. It's like, oh, you didn't announce it properly and I missed it. I don't think I announced it on Twitter, actually. Maybe that's what I've missed. Four and three by eight. Uh, timing pulley. Has the timing pulley got the thing? Yep. Grub screws is what I was looking for. Square nuts. T nut things. One, two, three, four. Presumably that's the right size. Yep, it's fine. Four of those and one M8 by 30. M8 by 30, truffin huge. Good evening, more people joining. Oh, of course, these end holes are M8. Trunky, right. Oh, it's basically that, 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 and then put it on there. So now that we've done that, let's go for this view. I'll obviously be continuing to follow the instructions, but I don't think we need them for every little part. So these four here. Gonna need a what's it to hold that in place when we push this on to the other side.
Oh, come on. <laughs> there we go. And line that on there, on that on there. And then... And then the motor. I think motor goes down. I think that's what this kind of cutaway part is. So stick that in there and that should line up. Yeah, that looks reasonable. And two screws down through there. I might have preferred some slightly longer screws just to allow some extra thickness in the 3D printed part. I mean, there are plenty of other size screws included, so it wouldn't be like we're adding a size. I suppose there are a lot of 8mm ones used, so maybe it did make sense to, to go with that size. That's that. And then, because I've got a slightly different design here, obviously you can only really access this pulley from one direction. Uh, so they actually want it on the other way around. So, in this way. Position the timing pulley as shown, the end of the stepper shaft should be flush with the end of the pulley. Well, that makes it nice and easy, in theory. So that's flush. Turn around and do the other one too. Me too. I can't wait to get this printer. I've been waiting for it for so long. <laughs> attach it to the printer. So we've got to line up these four screws at the back and then this one in the end which we can actually put in afterwards so that should be okay. Uh, just hold it down this way to give us plenty of space. Hopefully that should all just, no it's not going to go easy. Uh, that one. There we go. Stick that table in the end. Uh, we're going to need pretty massive hex for this. What size is this? Not even big enough. Well, let's do. Oh, sorry. Let's do this side first. Well, just do them loose, that way it's not going to fall off. And then we can make sure we get the right size thing. I've got a smooth linear rails for the minion. I have to relubricate them or fine. Um, my suggestion would be, if you mean you got the same linear rails, I mean they are smooth, if you're kind of saying they came good enough. So technically, the lubrication that's on there will work. Like it's still lubricant. It's still oil. It will reduce friction. It's not ideal, but if you really can't be bothered, it will work. My recommendation, especially if you want longevity and um, slightly lower noise, is to take the time to do it during your assembly process and clean them and apply a more appropriate grease. 
You don't have to, it's not gonna cause your printer to fail if you don't do that, but I would expect generally better results if you do. Well, that is rigid AF, so that looks pretty good. Jiggly jiggly, very nice. Take care not to over tighten the M8 by 30 screws, you can damage the printed parts. Yep. Big screws are very easy to overdo. Prepare the Y axis idler parts. So again, my Y axis idler is different to the original one. I'll show you here just so you got the latest inflammation. So, a couple of differences on mine. This has got some plastic stuck in it. So again, print orientation. Oh, hang on, let's get this down here. So, a couple of things to note. Firstly, this one has this extra flange on this side with two extra screws. But, I mean, the screws are so thick and strong and this part is pretty massive already. I don't think those two are gonna add much. So, it's also kind of over constrains the part a little bit and will make it a little bit more difficult to assemble. It might even, you know, it fits really quite well. So, I wouldn't worry about that from that perspective. But, it does use two screws that I don't think are necessary and I decided to take it off. Uh, and I also added this part here, which is kind of part of the um, jig. It positions the rail in the right place and it also stops any chance of the uh, rail coming off the end. I mean, this should kind of stop that as well, but this will stop it right at the end of the rail, whereas this will be a little bit after the end of the rail. So ultimately the design is really basically the same with some very little differences. I've also decided to print mine this way around. Uh, I think that will provide a slightly better result, whereas this one is printed standing up like this. So there you go. That's differences on my part there. But should mount still very easily right on the end. So, probably shouldn't have put away all these parts I'm now gonna need again. So we've got the printed part, four and six by 12. It's over here, four and six by 12, which is this bag. An extra little note at the end of the first step here would have been quite nice just to say, Keep these bags right next to you because you're going to need them again. Doesn't really matter, I suppose, but it's one of those nice little extras. So I'm only going to need two here instead of the four. We'll get them all out anyway, and we should find that we have two left. So those M5 by 50. Five by fifty is one of these in here. That's good there. Uh, two M eight by thirty. That's these. Two micro precision shim. Sure, where are those? Maybe in that bag of other stuff that I haven't got out. That's a Delrin block. That's a bunch of nuts. That's those, that's those. Um. Oh, 
Oh, here we go. A bag of like shim shaped things. One shim. <laughs> Come on, there we go. Two shim. One twenty tooth for nine mil play. Where is it? stuff away. Stop putting stuff away. Nine mil idler pulley. Idler pulley. Idler. And an M5 nylock nut. Hex locking nut M5. And one of these bad boys. Right, so this is put the things in the thing, put those in there, that in there, those in there, do -do 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 -do, and then assemble it. Nice. So, let's do that, shall we? Step numero uno. This long bolt with these things and those things and that thing and that. So that's got to get in there. Good luck with that. That's not going to be able to pull it through. And there's some metal stuck in here. Um, what do they suggest? Just put it in. Just put it in, mate. Stop stop worrying about it. Just put it in. There we go. See that you got because this part here is quite thin, you gotta be really quite careful with how you uh, tighten this part. Hi Ed. I thought I'd look into making a group buy of JST connectors when I saw your stream pop up. Uh I don't know why we need a group buy of JST connectors. But sure. Thin and micro shim. I'm pretty sure I got the right shimmies. The shim shimmies. Because these shim shimmies are thin in both directions. The other ones are PTFE shim shimmies. Or at least they're plastic. This is the only one that's metallic. And these will stop the bearing doing the other thing. Ooh, they got the uh, brass inserts in too. For compression, which is good. So this bit can probably be a little bit difficult. Hopefully we'll manage. That and that. Nope. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna do it the simplest way from the start. If I can find my tweezers, I'm gonna use tweezers. I can't find my tweezers. No, my 3D printing tweezers are disappeared. Well, that's not very good, is it? Right, just have to slog through this then. Here we go.
Oops, it wasn't. You hear what I'm doing? Yep. It's a bit tight. There is a little bit of warp on this part, actually. I had to print some bits on the um, V Core 3, which isn't enclosed, and it's all ABS, so. Not super ideal. There we go, that's reasonably all right. I don't want to over tighten it. Enough. It's got an eye lock in here, so that hopefully will stop it backing out. Could probably be a bit closer. It'd be nice to get a bit more engagement in the eye lock and have some threads poking out, but I think this will be okay. It's accessible afterwards, so it shouldn't be too hard to tighten up if, if needs be. Let's do a quick sponsor segment. The V Minion by Ratrig is an open source Cartesian bed slinger style 3D printed kit with ambitions of high performance at a reasonable cost. The 180mm cube build volume is achieved with rigid 3060 black anodized aluminium extrusion with MGN15 and MGN12 high carbon steel linear rails handling the motion. Clipper controls the whole thing, which you can set up easily thanks to RatOS, a pre-configured Raspberry Pi image whose main goal is to make Clipper as easy as possible. Many high quality and popular branded components are used, such as the Bontec LGX Lite, Fata's Dragonfly Hotend, Kinovo bed heater, LDO motors, and of course the Big Tree Tech SKR2 control board. The 5mm cast aluminium bed ensures even heating, the flexible surface helps with print removal, and the ever modular carriage gives you hot end and extruder options if you want to customise your machine. You can buy your full kit with a 12 euro discount or a mechanical kit with an 8 euro discount via the link and voucher codes in the description. Just enter the codes at the basket before checkout and this helps support the channel too. The Divider PCB is a wiring mod for the Ratrig V Minion, designed by me to allow easier separation of the Minion from its electronics controller box. This is ideal for those looking to enclose, move or just tidy up their machine. It comes as a DIY kit with everything included except for the wires. There's a written assembly manual to help you get everything correct, an assembly jig to make the soldering job as easy and mistake free as possible, and an enclosure for mounting. You'll also be pleased to know it's compatible with the Squirrel Brain Drag Chains mod too. You can order via the link in the video description. Uh, by the way, they are sold out at the moment on pre-order. Um, but I just wanted to show you like, this is how they're gonna be packaged, I think. So you've got like a plastic bag. Unfortunately, when you've got very little components, it's not very easy to get paper packaging that won't lose your, your tiny little components. So everything will come in like a little plastic bag like that. And then this package will be recyclable. So that will slot in there and then it'll be labeled and sent out like that. Uh, but yeah, they're not available at the moment. But what I want to do, if I put a link in the chat, um, it's a, if anyone that's interested in getting one, I'm just trying to gauge how many more people might want to get one so I can purchase more, but not end up buying way more than will actually ever sell. So that'd be useful if you can answer. Nice. So here we go. These on this side. Bada bing, bada boom. Hold that in. Oh, let's put the better camera angle, shall we? So you can see what the dickens is going on. That in there. Okay, these are not going to take because they're too close, so you have to trizzle this side.
And then you do the other two now, obviously, if you had them, but I don't, so I'm gonna have some spares, which is useful. And this lot goes in here. Bada bing, bada boom. These will tighten on here. And then we've got these big boy screws to go in the end. There's no option for considering, but not sure whether to have about my working printer wiring. Hmm, yes, I haven't put an option for that. I, I made it very binary. It's either yes, I want one or no, I don't. So we can take these little magnets off as well now, because oh, there shouldn't be any risk of that carriage. Oh, we still got this one, so we'll keep this one for a bit. That's looking pretty neat though, isn't it? There's a huge, enormous rail on there. minutes at a very leisurely pace. So now the Y-axis carriage and bed assembly. Cool. Let's move the little printer out of the way while we get everything ready. So we need some printed parts. It's going to be that piece. One of that piece. Looks like we need our nine millimeter belt. Again, if you've got the standard belt, then use the standard belt if you don't have anything else. I have some Knight's Gates belt, so I'm gonna be using that instead. And the M5 Nullock nuts. Uh, I'm not sure about the space it takes up. You might have to ask someone who's already got one working for that. Well, the dimensions could be on the website, in the project page. In the video description, there's a link to a project page, so hopefully that'll help. Four and three nylock nuts. Might be easy just to pour them out. <laughs> One, two, three, four. to M3 by 25 screw. Is this normal to have no gap on front of linear rail on Y axis? This is a modification. If you scroll back a little bit in the video, I literally just talked about it. Two and three by sixteen, they're also in here. And the white belt cover is this thing, and the belt. Right. So I'll move off the instructions down. I'll move it a bit closer if we can. And let's start assembling. So looks like 
What? No, hang on. Let's do it in the audio actually. It tells us to do it. In the how the that is ambitious. <laughs> um. Right, gonna need a strategy for this, aren't we? I'm poking it into place. I'm gonna need an M5 screw to uh, pull it through there. This is not very easy to do. Oh, they mentioned my part. What did they say? Good things or bad things? <laughs> Yeah, needing those pliers is probably a good idea. I'm trying not to use too many tools. Because I know a lot of people will not have this many tools. It's good to kind of test the build to see if it's possible without. smaller M5 screw. I think I can't push it. Oh no, there we go. Oh, just someone point it out. Okay. It has been quite popular. The video is less popular than I want, but the part has been popular. So those in there, and then and threes in the side, this side. excited to see other people find my parts. Is this the ADXL mount? Is that what this bit's for? I don't know where my ADXL is. Oh, the long screws that don't do anything. Oh yeah, the ones that I'm doing at the moment. Yeah, 
If it's just as easy to add later, I'll probably do it later because I don't actually know where my sensor is at the moment. I do only have one. And I just move it between printers as necessary. So that's the four M3 nuts. I'll now put in the two M3 screws that I've just taken out. Yep, excellent, good idea. <laughs> Well, we know what they're for, so I'm just going to put them in a, a, a bit that's enough, and we'll deal with it later. M5 no lock nut in here. Oh, nice. Timing belt. So, instructions. So make a loopy thing and then put the platy thing over the top of the loopy thing. So I shall try and replicate this. Oh, sorry. Switchy, switchy, switchy. So it actually tilts it this way up. So the short side is towards the chamfer at the bottom here. How the dickens is that getting in? <laughs> Oh, I think we've sorted there. That Jiminy in there, that Jiminy in there. Tighten it down. How did your linear rails rust? I'm guessing you didn't uh, oil them. That's, I wouldn't know how to treat them, to be honest. He didn't do it upside down, no, he's done it right. Simon Davy finally bought a set of those Wira Hex Plus keys. I'm mad at like. <laughs> They're nice, aren't they? A little bit pricey, but good tools. Me likey. I do like them. Right. Oh. We back. Okay, are we good? 
let me know if it goes craps out again. But it, from my end, there was literally no errors. It was all streaming just fine, no drop frames. And yep, yeah, I think YouTube had just a, a minor hiccup. Some more printed parties. Printy parties, where's the... Probably a strange question. You with ANA for your internet. I don't know what ANA is, so no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not with AA. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Still no. Please say I've not missed this part. I think I've missed a part, a single part. Well. Let's use the Ratwig one, the, the Watwig one, which is in PETG, but should be fine. Hopefully that's gonna fit it in my design, it might not. Because mine is slightly different shape. Yes, it doesn't fit in mine. I swear I printed that out before, and no, I can't fit it. Well, let's have another look and then we're going to have to fire up a print if not. Get the big parts so we don't miss it. It is definitely, definitely, 100% not there. I have not printed this part. So we're going to have to print it now. So we're going to V0.1 it. Uh, which means it might end up blue. That's okay for now. We can make a black one at another date. Another day, another time. So, let's get the uh, Oh, it's, it's, I don't keep the speed settings on the whole time. I have special speed settings and then normal settings. The block and the belt holder should be ABS. I mean... <laughs> I can't tell if it's ABS. You can try cutting it with a knife, see if... Uh... 
I mean, it is black, so maybe it is. Yeah, that looks like ABS to me. PETG, normally I think cut a little bit differently to that. I've not printed PETG in a little while. Hmm. Difficult to say. This is quite buttery. I think it probably is, I'm not too sure. So, first let's get this preheated to ABS. Oh, my Fusion account is offline. I had my Raspberry Pi stop booting. I turned it off for a couple of days and then it was okay again. So, It does a kind of a boot check and like I think it can repair itself upon turning on. But I'm not an expert on that, don't quote me. Uh, the minion mods. So I'm just going through my GitHub to hopefully find the part that I need. What about tensioner? Yeah, that looks like it. Side screws on the idler, uh, just for mounting an ADXL, they didn't do anything else. Um, yeah, let's go ahead with this uh, material, ABS, V0, strong. It'll be blue, but it's going to be okay. That's the one up here. Well, that's printing. Uh, I'm gonna get the rest of the parts, hopefully together, that I need for this. So, the triangle play, two M5 by 12 screws. How do you like the V0? It's good. <laughs> I don't know why I said it with a weird high pitch voice. It's very good for doing like individual smaller parts. It heats up much quicker than the 2.4.
bedwire guide start bedwire guide start that's this piece white belt tensioner that's what we're making and then m5 by 50 is that this looks like this yep And then that's the extruder is up to temperature, waiting for the beds coming at seventy three and a bit out of a hundred and ten. So what do we do in the meantime? <laughs> uh, I guess we can probably continue with maybe a little bit of the assembly. Uh, probably not much, but we can do a little bit. Ooh, they are weird screws. So it's going to be important which way this goes. That goes that way up. Oh, yeah, don't need those. Oh, you won't be able to see much because the camera's putting it over there. So that's that way, that's that way, that's that way. Three mil hacks. Good old chin wag. It's not so easy to chin wag when you're uh, not like, I mean, live, but not in person kind of thing. Weather's lovely, isn't it? <laughs> Who's enjoying the weather today? Isn't it fabulous? It's nice to get some warmth again. It's been a while. Was this perfect? That's the wrong size screen. How's the temperature going? Come on, Mr. Printer. Eighty nine out of one hundred and ten. Even when it's quicker than 2.4, it is still printing ABS, so it does take a little while. I'm going to bring the camera around here because it's going to be a while, so that we might as well just carry on. Hopefully we can come back to this bit without causing too much trouble. So we got that on here with these two screws and that on here with these two nuts and those two screws. Fairly simple. Screws are a bit short. I'm going to need to hold these with something because it's not going to work if we don't. I'm going to use the wrong tool just to irritate everyone. Uh, 
Good, 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 good. Mm. It's a bit wonky. That's a bit less wonky. Ninety-seven out of one hundred and ten. It's slowly getting there. Are oh, screws expensive? Screws are unbelievably cheap. One buying singles or low quantities can be expensive because people basically charge whatever they like. Um, but at larger quantities, they're very, very cheap. They're made on such an enormous scale that the machines to produce them are pretty efficient. So more M3 by eight screws. Good evening to Germany. Screws. So to mount this onto the bed, we're going to have the belt going out the back, that going on there, and this mounting directly to here. Uruguay. We've got the whole world joining in this evening. Yeah, screws, especially small ones, definitely best bought in the, they come in like a box of a few hundred. So that's generally a good quantity to buy. Obviously, the more you buy, the better, though. Well, the more the buy, the lower the cost per screw. Obviously, the overall cost will still always go up. Zoom, 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 zoom. <laughs> The purple's good, isn't it? The more we get together, it just, it contrasts really well with the black. I like it a lot. Okay, so we've got to the part of the instructions, uh, not there, over here, where we need that idle doobly thing. So it's gonna tell us how to put the belt around the thing and hold this and then do that over there. The V0 has just started. Hopefully that's not going to take too long. It said 20 minutes, which is pretty small amount of time. So that's just going to have to dingle dangle until we're ready. We need the tensioner and all that kind of stuff. So we'll start getting onto the bed. Applying the heater to the bed. 
I'm gonna go wash my hands quickly because I don't want to get um, greasy fingers on the bed. I'll literally be 30 seconds. I'm not even gonna change the stream to anything. <laughs> nice weird sound for you all. <laughs> These Allen keys are Vera, Vera. There's a link in the description, I believe, which is an affiliate link as well, I believe. They are on the pricey side, but they are quite nice. So for the bed assembly, we of course need the bed. looks like so. We need some washers. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six nylon washers. Oh, we're going to need spacers as well, aren't we? Three stainless steel spacers. One, two, three. M4 nylock locking hex nut. Three. Yeah, three M4, not four M3. And then M4 by 30 countersink screws. Maybe here. I'm worried that this part is going to come out a little bit on the mushy side printing quite quick. Let me have a quick look. It is a little bit on the mushy side. I've increased the fan speed a touch. Hopefully that's enough to compensate for the speed without ending up being cooled too quickly and ending up just being brittle, which is probably what's going to happen now that I've tried to rush it. <laughs> Sod's law, right? Use the nylon spacers, not the stainless steel ones. You can level the bed easier with that. Is that why they've included them? Nylon spacers. Optional nylon spacers that presumably compress a little bit more. I'm going to be printing ABS. Always be printing ABS. Probably, maybe, I don't know. And the silicone heater. So this is not very careful about mentioning which side to put this on. It looks like you put it on the side with the holes and the countersink goes on the other side. So we're gonna peel the, the blue stuff off. 
we can get an edge blimey I didn't do this very well last time I did one. Hopefully I can do this one better. Remove the adhesive. And obviously, critical dimension here is making sure we line up these holes. Hopefully that's all right. Looks pretty good. Probably should have changed the camera angle so you could see a bit better, but I think that's going to be okay. Cool. <laughs> Love it when you get two flat surfaces like that. I wonder if I like. Cool, we've got a bed heater. It's still the bed plate. Bit wide, it's going to be difficult to. Uh... Why doesn't the silicone heater go all the way to the edge? Honestly, I don't really know. Personally, I'd have got it as close to the edge as possible. It only covers 160 millimeters. I mean, it doesn't need to go all the way to the edge, but a bit closer to the edge probably would have been good. The bed plate, I believe, is five millimeters thick. Let me check that. Indeed, it's five millimeters. Yeah, bed's 185, heater's only 160. I think if I do this now, it's gonna be more difficult to do the Uh, the belt. It's wanting me to put these songs on and then put this on the top and that's going to be a pain so I don't want to do that. And then print surface. You can do this. So if you're using the parts that I have modified, uh, or if you're going to be using my PCB mod, um, which has the enclosure, you'll find there's an alternative white end stop. It is quite a different shape, um, and it fits in a different way. So obviously I've not tested it because I've only just got a printer, but it should work just the same as the original. So we need one of these. And we need one of these. Yay, more. <laughs> I'm happy for you to go and buy the calibration and test suite. 
It's much easier to stock digital parts. Funny that, eh? So this, this, we need an end stop, an electrical thing. Mm. <laughs> Um, I think a lot of the ones, a lot of the heaters on AliExpress are also made by Kinovo. They are making many, many silicone heaters. But I obviously can't speak for every seller, so like, don't assume that it's made by them just because you bought it from AliExpress, but they do make quite a few. M5 by 12 cap head screw. Oh, we're just going to accumulate bundles of parts here. M5 by 12. Is that this one? That's this one. M5 drop in nuts. Is it all M6? Drop in nut M3 and M5. Lost the partition on Clipper. No! And M6 by 12. Oh, and a drop in M6 nut too. Two and three by eight cap head screws. Just going to look for the standard Y and stop part, just so I can explain the difference. Be best, maybe this one. Look in here. Yes, so this is the original one, obviously in green here, and then this is my one. So you can see the portion that mounts the switch is exactly the same, but in fact, if we overlay those right on top of each other. You can see that the green one mounts to the side of the extrusion, whereas the purple one mounts to the top. So if we move this over to here... Uh, change my mind. We're going this way around. Maybe this way. So green one would mount like this. Oops, it's dozy. Would mount like this down here but it takes too much space down here and we need that height there for the enclosure. And I could have maybe fiddled with it just a tiny little bit. I thought, let's just have all the space in the world and put this one right up in here. And it also then serves a part of this as a bump stop for the carriage so that your what's it can't come off the end. So hopefully, well, let's get this out of the way and now follow the assembly instructions. She says to do the other bit first. So this one, basically a cable management thing. And this. That just slots. Nice and tidily down in there. Is that the right way up? Nope. Try it 
try again, Adam. There we go. This way up, right down in here. Then you've got some zip tie holes for holding stuff in. And then we've got, so this is the standard instructions for the end stop, which is put the end stop uh, for the end stop mount. Put the end stop on here and this threads uh, straight into plastic. Ah, come on. And the bone is ready, it's done. So once we've done these parts, we can go back to the actual order of instructions. Nice, four test files and manual for the price of five pounds. Is a steal. Is it four? I thought it was three, but anyway. <laughs> I'm glad you think it's a good deal. I think a lot of people think it's a good deal. I think it's a good deal. Some people, are angry that I'm selling STL files. Wow. <laughs> there we go. That goes on there. Get that in here. So, same screw, same nut should slot right at the end in here just the same as the other one would on the side pop give it a little wiggle because i don't know is it not quite good a fit hmm. it's not quite going to fit we have to slightly Pull the motor out. The trouble is, this gap is just not quite long enough for the nut in that lengthways position. I reckon if we took it off of that assembly, we could probably squeeze it in. But so, if you don't want to do this, then you could try that. But it doesn't take much to move this out a tiny bit. Put that in there. should fit snugly just there. And then we can pull this back in. So that should then contact, oh, we can take our magnet off. And here's the belt out of the way. And that contacts perfectly on the carriage. Exactly as intended. Thought it would be done in two hours. I'm taking my time and going carefully and gently so people can follow along. I've always thought we should do, there should be like um, 
some charity live stream things where we get printer kits and everyone like simultaneously streams. You get like a couple of the bigger YouTubers as well and we simultaneously stream like all on one thing so we can all watch one video. And you just race to see who can build it the fastest. I think that'd be really fun. Uh, this is not looking great. Gotta be honest. It might have rushed a bit on those belt details. I'm going to use a sharp pointy stick to try and clear them a little bit. Pointed stick. I don't think I'm going to do a VCOR 3 build in one video. That would be mental. <laughs> okay, let's concentrate on proper instructions. In fact, before we do that, I'm just going to check that I can actually fit the belt into this little assembly. Let's cut it to here so it's straight at the end. Should be able to tuck this bad boy in here. The whole printer wasn't printed on the V0 just this part because I forgot to print it so now it's in the wrong colour and everything. Hmm. It's very very tight. <laughs> I wish there was just like, someone needs to make a tool that we can just like jam in the ends here to clear out those channels for parts like this. Maybe that someone needs to be me, eh? See, as I just had the idea. <laughs> yeah, that's too big. Just need something to poke in them and clear them out a little bit. Okay, I can probably get that in now. So let's try and get the belt the right length and we'll have a go. So what does it say to do? We've got some instructions on how to cut this belt. Take the free end of the tying belt and feed it around the stepper motor pulley. Continue on the underside of the Y-axis, feed it around the Y-axis idle pulley. Y Did I say X? Anyway. Continue back to the Y carriage. Pull the belt and mark where it meets the Y carriage. This can be with a marker or simply by holding it. Measure 16 millimeters or count eight teeth on the belt from the position marked previously. Double check your measurements and then cut the belt. So here to here. 
from here and then count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, five. Hopefully did that right. Right, hopefully this is gonna go in here. Please, please, please go in. <laughs> I was feeling optimistic, but I'm not sure now. How wide is that belt? The belt is nine millimeters. Hmm. How are we gonna do this? I'm not even sure the blue bit's going to fit on its own. It's time for another quick sponsor segment. Back in a second. The V Minion by Ratrig is an open source Cartesian bed slinger style 3D printed kit with ambitions of high performance at a reasonable cost. The 180mm cube build volume is achieved with rigid 3060 black anodized aluminium extrusion with MGN15 and MGN12 high carbon steel linear rails handling the motion. Clipper controls the whole thing, which you can set up easily thanks to RatOS, a pre-configured Raspberry Pi image whose main goal is to make Clipper as easy as possible. Many high quality and popular branded components are used, such as the Bontec LGX Lite, Fata's Dragonfly Hotend, Kinovo Bed Heater, LDO Motors, and of course the Big Tree Tech SKR2 control board. The 5mm cast aluminium bed ensures even heating, the flexible surface helps with print removal and the ever modular carriage gives you hot end and extruder options if you want to customize your machine. You can buy your full kit with a 12 euro discount or a mechanical kit with an 8 euro discount via the link and voucher codes in the description. Just enter the codes at the basket before checkout and this helps support the channel too. The divider PCBs. Oh. I forgot a bit about the divider PCB. That's all right. That's my that's my segment. Basically, the divider PCB is the mod that I've been working on to help with the uh, wiring. It's sold out at the moment and I cannot get this belt in. I'm gonna to have to take it out again. It's too tight. It's too tighty, too tighty. Well, how well does the rat rig one fit? This one probably just like pushes straight in super easy, doesn't it? This gap does look much wider than mine. Yeah. That's how easy it should be. <laughs> hmm. I've got an idea.
I'm going to use a very small drill bit. This might help. It might ruin it, but it might help. I've either made it much worse or barely okay. <laughs> it's just not wide enough. The whole slot is just not wide enough. Do we have a thin enough file we can put in there and try and widen the gap a little bit? No. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Just stab myself in the eye with this thing. <laughs> the problem is, Pavel, I made a slight modification <laughs> to the angles because I did my ABS optimized parts, so the rat rig one won't fit. <laughs> I suppose I could file down the outside. I'm trying to go as quick as I can. We have a YouTube member. Yay. My first ever YouTube member. Awesome bananas. Here we go. I've made it, I've made it. I've done a thing, everyone. Done a thing. Yeah, suck it. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't aimed at <laughs> you, but Oh, come on, what? Wait, oh, doesn't fit. <gasps> oh, for the love of God. So I probably could have used the wrap rig one. Right, we're going. This is not something you'll be doing in your build. This is because I modified the parts and they're not quite right. <laughs> so don't take this as a judgment on rat rig, please. <laughs> right, please fit. 
Oh, this is the worst. What am I doing? I don't know how I'm having so much bad luck here. bananas. Okay, we're there, we're there, panic over. We've made it, it's in. Oh, and then the whole thing, I forgot to point the camera in the right direction. No, oh, bits of blue plastic all over me. That's a nightmare. Chaos. You can be first. I think this is. I think I've got too much slack. There's other tiers. You can be first on a different tier. There's a PETG tier, there's a PLA tier, and there's an ABS tier. I'll definitely uh, improve my design for that one a little bit, if I have the time. Should do. Commit. Yeah, I'll commit to doing that. It needs improvement. So, where were we? Belt, cut you the belt, do the belt, put that in there, pull that in there. Jobs are good. Prepare the bed, done that, done that, done that, done that. Now we're onto this. Put these things on here, that on there. That on there, that on there, that on there. Nope. Down there. This is only going to take three washers. That on there. Can put one underneath as well. Those through there, and then washer in there. Yeah, okay. So we need our bed back. Uh, let's make sure we get the bed the right way round. Oh, well, that's the side with two watsits, so it's got to go that way. One, two, three. Yeah, ABS is just super tier because reasons really. 
I needed a name and I went with materials. Maybe I could change it to like carbon fiber nylon or something. No, changing them, you have to go through a whole approval process to have uh, membership tiers. So it's not easy to change them once you've got them. And I think anyone on that tier instantly gets removed, so. Just think of it as printing temperature related tiers. Oh, while people are here as well, I think uh, I'll share the uh, link again. Um, if you can, anyone that hasn't, fill out the poll. Obviously, if you're watching this after the fact, like by like days, it's not going to be relevant. But well, actually, do. If it's weeks, don't bother. If it's days, then probably do still. Why am I using this stupid tool? Use the proper tool, Adam. <laughs> right, where's the appropriate sized? I don't know if I have a great appropriately sized. Yes, I do, of course I do. Got half a million bloody tools, I must have the right thing. <laughs> Oh, is this going to fit? Yes. There we go. Um. This and we need this. In fact, if I just pop them in the end of that, that'll sort that out. This is my sincerest you stop showing off your tools. It's costing me a fortune. Saws. <laughs> Oh no, this, this was a good idea, but I need, it's, the screw doesn't go down far enough, so I'll have to put them on manually. So presumably the bed levelling involves just adding a bit of extra tension in those and the, the washers compress a tiny little bit and it helps level it out. Obviously you've got inductive sensors and stuff to help with the, the very fine adjustment. So hopefully that all works out okay. Alt MP, I am peaked here. Oh yeah, I could do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe it adds like a super premium peak. Peak tier is peak, P-E-E-K for P-E-A-K. Uh, goes in there, print surface. 
Where is the print stuff? Once the magnetic sheet is installed, the screws become inaccessible. For those reasons, it is recommended to cut three holes into the magnetic sheet prior to installation. A printable template is available to assist in locating where to cut the holes in the magnetic sheet. Click here to download it. I will be back in 30 seconds. I'm going to go print that thing so I can test it out. Because if I don't, then I don't know if it works. Hopefully I can find it rather quick on this other computer and then we can use it. If I print it out, hopefully it will print out one to one scale. Where is it? Somewhere down here. Scroll, 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 scroll. Click to download. Open. Open. Control pre print. Hopefully that comes out quick. One single piece of paper left in the printer. Can anyone remind me if I've done two sponsor segments or not? I have no idea. I did, didn't I? And I accidentally skipped my own bit the second time. That's fine. Here we go. It does look like a so. The directions. Once printed, verify the dimension of the template using a ruler. have a ruler. Let's use a tape measure. It looks a bit big. It's in fact a bit small. It's 175 mil instead of 180. So they're going to have to be slightly different. What I'm going to do is cut it out. Is that going to work? No. Oh! I found them! Yes! Sorry, I'm related. Um, Shoppy this way. There's a print setting for those that are going to try print this off as well. When you do a control P or whatever, start your print, you want to double check the scale box there's always a scale and the default is like fit to page and when you have stuff like this that you need to be the right size it probably won't come out the right size if you have it auto fit even if it's designed to be the right size specifically for an a4 page so just make sure it doesn't scale it and presumably then it should come out the right size because hopefully they've designed it yeah so this is for me, it's too small. I'm going to go try and print it again with the right size, and hopefully, second time with the scale fixed, it should come out a little better. Um, hopefully, we can find it somewhere here. We need some more paper. Paper loaded. Control P. Control P. Copy, print dialog, preferences, paper and quality, advanced. Oh no, why is it not in there? Okay, we're going to have to go. So, because it opened in Chrome, I think it doesn't give us many options. Download the PDF reader. I'll print again. Control P. Here we go. Okay. And then print. Should then get it at exactly the right size.
No, it's the wrong size. So that jig doesn't really work, unfortunately. Uh, they're Molex SL. The connections I use forever. Prusa on their new head are using very different connectors. It's a JST, but it's smaller than XH and different to PH. And it has a little locking thing, I think. I don't know why I'm cutting this out because it's the wrong size. If you all can review this document, because it looks like even if you print at the correct scale, it'd come out wrong size. See what it looks like compared to the holes on the bed. That's what I'm doing. Let's fold these out of the way so we can see through. Yeah, it wouldn't work. Just more. I did set it to print at 100% scale. What I'm going to do is mm, not easy. Uh, Measure it with a ruler? That sounds way too easy, why would I do that? I can get my punches as well now, excited. This size should be good enough. Hopefully somewhere here. I've got to get a hammer. Need an hammer for this. There we go. That's right. The whole thing is slipping and sliding all over the shop. Oh, 
How do we do? Oh. The magnet's smaller than the metal surface. <laughs> All of these things are different sizes. Right, there we go, that should work. Don't hammer the granite. I have mildly damaged the granite. It's a worktop table. I suppose I do want to keep it nice and flat, don't I? So I should be. It's so good. I wonder how much it would take to just literally send a crack all the way through it. Who knows? So let's get this off here. I just glued my sheet on top and used an exacto knife to make the hole by feel. Yep, I mean, you could do it that way. Yay, another member! Falkenstein, welcome! Ooh, there was something else I was going to mention. No, I don't know. Falkenstein just became a member. There are a bunch of post four members already, despite the fact we've only just had the first ones. I've been adding posts for the last couple of weeks, maybe, so. Normally I do 
actually clean the aluminium first. On this occasion, I did not do that. It's not oil so much on there, it's normally just debris from cutting, very, very small bits of residual cutting material. Sorry if that's a bit noisy. Right. Once the magnetic sheet is installed, the M4 by 30 screws securing the bed become inaccessible. Okay, that's doop -a doop -a doop. The sheet is backwards. Well, you don't know which way I'm going to have my machine, do you? <laughs> Maybe I like it backwards. <laughs> uh, we've done that, we've done the end start, we've done the cabling management -y thing. We've done that, we've done that, and we're there. Two hours. I did suspect we'd just managed the Y thing. I shall update the title afterwards to make sure it just mentions the Y based things. Skin oils. I don't think we're going to get skin oils on the metal that's never been touched by human skin. That's this bit that has skin oils. The milled aluminium plate has just been machined by a factory from its manufacturing state. I don't think anyone would have touched that. So, there we have it. We're there. Another successful bit of assembly of the Rat Rig V Minion. Oh, the kind of purple and gold looks pretty freaking sweet, doesn't it? <laughs> There's a bit much. Purple and gold. This purple is pretty good. I really like it. Yeah, Falkenstein, you get that little badge thing. I like them, eh? <laughs> Papa, you don't like anything that's not green. <laughs> Right, that's going to be it for me today though. This is round the wrong way, isn't it? The front is this side. It's just weird because the bed wires come out the front and then they go like under here to the back, don't they? But I like it, I like it, I like it, I like it. So yeah. Don't forget to answer the poll. I'll put it on again if it's, it's the right link still on. Yep. Don't forget to answer the poll if you're interested in a PCB, the divider PCB uh, for Minion. I mean, you can actually use it on other printers as well. And it has some little writing on it and it has a whole load of instructions and pin diagrams and all this kind of stuff. So you will not be short of information and of course, you've got the Vector 3D Discord for asking questions and stuff as well. So yeah, if you're interested, tap the link key in the doobly. How sturdy it feels. Yep. It feels like if I threw it through a wall, it would be the same afterwards as it was before. <laughs> So yeah, thank you everyone for watching. I hope it was useful for those building with me. And that's gonna be it for me today. Oh, isn't it looking good? Um, yep, don't think anything else to say. Don't forget voucher codes if you wanna get one. Again, top of the description, as well as purchase links, all this kind of stuff. You know, you know, you know, you know. I shall see you all in the next one, which should be Wednesday, three-ish, three, half past three-ish, three o'clock, three, three p.m. BST now, we're British summertime rather than GMT. So obviously timing shifts, but the actual time is the same. So British summertime, half past three in the afternoon, because I can't do the evening. So there we go. <sighs> Two hours, 15 minutes, not too bad. Bit of adjustment still, we've got to put that um, 
Oh, I forgot to untighten that. But yes, good. Anyway, I've said goodbye like six times now, so 